sorry. All right. So, so we just finished uh, our talk, how to start a location. We did. And a little interview with Pastor Xavier Jackson. What up? Um, and Xavier, how old are you? 25. 25. So 25. that would put you in the what category? Uh, I'm a young adult, uh, Gen Z. <laughs> Gen Z. Yep. yep. Okay, great. Yeah. And old soul. Old soul. Yeah, I like to kick it. <laughs> wow, I don't know what that means. It means, you know, chillax vibes. You know what I'm saying? Not too much, but not too not too little. It feels you know, like you're doing too much nice right now. sweet spot. Okay. A little bit. All right. So, uh, Gen Z, you started our most recent location. I did. And we have actually two location pastors who are Gen Z, 25. Yeah. Um, and so I want to talk a little bit about the the value of, of making leaders fast. Yeah. And giving young leaders opportunity. That's good. Talk to me a little bit about being your age, starting a location. Did you have some challenges with people going, wow, you're young? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, first starting off the north, the northwest location, that being our most recent location. Yeah, launching it, you know, we're we're trying to reach lost people. We get an influx of you know new people and people who have done church a certain way for so long. Uh, people who maybe have never done church a certain way. With that, though, that influx of people, you got seasoned saints, you got new to the faith, you know, younger people, and. Um, yeah, I, I have old seasoned saints come up to me and say, wow, you're young to be a pastor. Like, I, I, I can't imagine this right now. I also have young season or young saints who are like, wow, you're young to be a pastor. Like, I don't know nobody my age, mm. you know, being a pastor. And um, it definitely brings its, its challenges on both ends. You know, um, sometimes it's, it's hard for a seasoned saint to receive from somebody younger than themselves in the faith. And sometimes it's hard for somebody your age to receive from you, you know, being their age. Um, you know, I think relationship is everything. I think the the more they know you actually care about and are invested in their lives and they see the fruit from your life, uh, that starts to break down that barrier then. Yeah. And then it's it's easy for them to receive from you yeah. at that point. That's great. Anything from our talk about certain location that really spoke to you, you wanted to kind of enumerate? Yeah. So I think that, you know, making leaders fast is is very important. And, um, you know, I, I just... Obviously, uh, John Maxwell says everything rises and falls on leadership. And, you know, being in the Northwest location, I've seen that to be the case. I've seen um, volunteer teams really thrive when they have the right leader in place and then maybe not thrive when they don't have the right leader in place or don't have a leader at all. And so I think to reach the potential of those teams and, and those volunteers, the, the leaders are so important to be there. They're so, And it's also important to have the right leader there. How are you making leaders fast? So I bring them into my circle. I'm very much, and I've learned this from you actually, is getting vulnerable with my leaders, inviting them into my home, um, having regular you know, time together with them, not really leaving it to a Sunday or weekly meeting things, but really doing life with them regularly. I think it's the easiest way for them to catch culture off of my life, not just off the systems that we have in place and such, and makes them faster. What's the balance of throwing somebody to the fire, mm -hmm. but providing the proper training? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I think, I think, I, I think a lot of that just comes with emotional intelligence. I think sometimes you have to know who, who you're throwing to, you know, what scenario and what situation are they built mentally for this emotionally for this? Um, because I don't think it's a one size fits all. I think some leaders are going to be ready quicker, um, and able to handle something. Uh, faster than maybe another individual. Right. And so, yeah, I think that comes down to your emotional intelligence. It's really good. Emotional intelligence. Um, all right. So talk to us a little bit about, as before we conclude, how difficult was it to start the location? What did you go through? Yeah. So we were, uh, 2021 was really our like pre-launch phase. And so, you know, that's still very COVID, you know, era 2022, we, we launched, but you know, around that time, specifically here in the city, uh, not everybody was coming to church yet, you know, and <laughs> they were they still were dragging not. their they still <laughs> not. And uh, they were dragging their feet. With that said, you know, our our hope when we launch a location is to launch it with a certain amount of volunteers, or whatever. Uh, but at this point, we felt led to do it. But we had to work with what we had. And so we launched with about, you know, 40 volunteers. But we we're also breaching new new territory. First time being on the other side of, of broad, you know, here in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so it was going to be a whole new subsection region uh, that we were reaching. And so 
on the front end, it was hard in the sense of like, man, we had our volunteer team and like- We, we, we had about 30 to 40 people yeah. who were over on that side of the city yep. that were kind of committed. Right, yep. Okay. 30 to 40 people over on that side of the city that were kind of committed. And, you know, but at, at the beginning, because we're breaking new ground, like they, were, they had to be present for most things, you know? Mm. We needed them to serve multiple services up front, mm. especially when we launched, because not only are we bre- breaking new ground, we're breaking new ground coming out of COVID era. Mm. And so- uh, that was a bit challenging, but God is faithful, man. And, and you know, the prize is held for those who endure. And our team's Amen. rocked out. And, and yeah, we, we've, seen, we've seen growth. All right, last thing. The venue process was very challenging. Yeah, it was. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I also uh, have a role as a real estate agent here <laughs> at the, the Block Church. Every location pastor Every does. location pastor. Yeah, I mean, coming out of COVID again, most venues were shut down. Most of them were not trying to rent out their space, even if they weren't using it because they didn't want the political backlash from the Mm -hmm. communities on, you got people gathering here, you you know, places getting, you know, people getting sick and stuff. And so, man, we were, I mean, fighting, praying, intercessing for for a venue. We end up locking in the contract. It forced our launch down the road because we couldn't find somewhere Yeah, six months later, I believe. But you identified a property that you loved. Yes. What did you do? I identified the property that I loved. I went there. Nobody was there. Nobody was occupying the space. I finally found out who owned it. I was blowing up their offices. They weren't answering. I started pulling up to the office's parking lot, harassing employees. Hey, do you got the, the CEO's <laughs> number? You know, I'm trying to get that. They they would throw my number in their purse, not get anything. I ended up finding the CEO on LinkedIn. And so then I DM. Right, stop. <laughs> You're going to the property. Yep. You're harassing employees. Borderline. Borderline. You can't get any answers. Yeah. Nobody's there. Nobody's there. You find the CEO on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn. You have a LinkedIn? No, I just Googled okay. it. I was making sure. Yeah. That would mean maybe you're looking for another job. No, so. no, no, okay. no. I don't I don't have a LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't have a LinkedIn, but I found her her social media profiles. I okay. found her name. I DM'd her on Instagram, messaged her on Facebook and was like, hey, wow. this is a last ditch effort. You know, I've been trying to hit y'all up for about, you know, nine months now. I'm not getting any response. Yeah. Uh, finally, I get a call back some months later and uh, and that gets the ball rolling on on this venue and here we are here today. we are Amazing. not to mention first venue stay set up no tear now and now you're on the board of that nonprofit yep yep so I am uh, on the board in the process of, of coming onto the board and uh, yeah have great relationship with the venue owners great. and uh, it's been amazing it's great look it, that's sometimes what it takes to start a location it's true 